Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and today I'll be showing you 10 things that annoy beginners when using GIMP plus how to fix them. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.32 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. <laughs> Before I get into that guys, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in my new WordPress 6.0 for non-coders course, also on Udemy. Or you can get access to additional content by becoming a DMD Premium member and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Let's start off with the first item on this list, and that is that the move tool does not move the active layer that the user is on. So depending on which software you're coming from, if you've used other photo editing software before, such as Affinity Photo or Photoshop, the move tool works differently in those software. So here I am inside of GIMP. Here's a composition I created in a tutorial you could check out on my channel. And if I come over here to the toolbox, you'll see that I have the move tool selected here. So hit the M key on your keyboard to grab that move tool. So right now I'm selected on this G layer. Let's say I'm over here on a different part of the image and I just go to click and drag it. You'll see it's actually going to drag the exact pixels that I'm clicked on, which is going to be this layer here that contains this line. So let me hit control Z. In GIMP over here in the tool options for this tool, by default, the move tool is set to pick a layer or guide. So basically it's going to pick whatever layer I'm hovered over based on the pixels I click on. So for example, if I click on the M pixels, it'll move that. I'll hit control Z. To change that, I can simply toggle this to move the active layer and this will move whatever my active layer is. So now it doesn't matter where I click. When I start to drag, it'll move that active layer. So I'll hit control Z. You can always undo that by simply clicking on the other radio option. And you'll see that you can also hold the shift key as a key modifier. So if you don't want to always come over here and change this, simply hold the shift key and that will move the active layer. So I'll hit control Z. So the second item on this list is that maybe you're trying to save to a JPEG file. However, GIMP keeps wanting to save to a .xcf file. What in the heck is a .xcf file anyway? Well, actually the solution to this problem is super easy. So here we are back inside our composition. This composition obviously has a bunch of layers. So we want to save this as a JPEG file, which will compress everything into a single JPEG image. So if I were to go to file, save or file, save as, it's going to take you to the save image window and the file extension by default will be .xcf, which is GIMP's native file format. It's similar to Photoshop's PSD file format. But if I wanted to export this as a JPEG and I type JPEG here and hit the enter key, we're actually going to get an error message. And this message will read the given file name cannot be used for saving. You can use this dialog to save to the GIMP XCF format, the native file format in GIMP or you can use file export to export to other file formats. So there's our answer right there. We need to go to file export instead. So you'll see here, it even has a link that says, take me to the export dialog. So when you click on that, it will open up the export image dialog. You can also get there if I exit out of here by going to file export or export as, and you can see the shortcut keys for this. So either one of those will work. It'll take you to the same place. And now you'll see our file extension by default will be PNG, but we can also change this to .jpeg. And we can hit export to export this, or you can always search through the different file extensions in here to see the different file formats you can save to in GIMP. And by the way, all you have to do is click on the file format and it will automatically update with that file extension here. So you don't have to worry about you know, manually typing the right extension. So once you're ready, hit export. Usually these file formats that you export to are going to have a second window pop up as has just happened right here. So right now I'm just gonna keep all the settings at the default and hit export again. So moving on to the third thing that annoys beginners when using GIMP is that every time they perform a transformation on their image, it loses quality 
and it just keeps on losing more and more quality and it looks terrible by the time you're done with all your transformations. So to demonstrate this issue in action, I'm going to create a quick composition using a couple of images. So let's navigate over to this first image. What I'll do is I'll click and drag the tab of this image over to this other image I have opened up in GIMP and then come over here with my mouse and release the mouse over the canvas and that's going to drop this image onto this other image that we have so now we've combined the two images. So over here in the layers panel you'll see this layer called dropped buffer which is how GIMP automatically names images that you drop into another image and then if I hide that layer, we have the original image. So we've got two images here. So let me just show you real quick an example of what may be happening. Maybe you hit Shift S to scale this image. So we're gonna drag the handle down and that's going to decrease the size of this. So I'll hit scale. So there's one transformation. If I hold Control zoom in, it's already lost some quality, but let's say we wanted to perform some other transformations on this. For example, Shift F is going to be the flip tool, so maybe we flip this around. And then Shift R is going to be the rotate tool, maybe we rotate it for whatever reason. So I'll hit rotate. And maybe we decide to scale it once again, so we hit Shift S, and we're gonna scale it up and hit scale. And by the time we're done with all that, uh, you may have noticed now, it might be harder to see on the video recording, but this image has now lost significant uh, image quality. So let's hit Control Z and back up so that we can fix that. So we're gonna back up to the point where we drop this image in the composition. The reason that the image is losing quality is that GIMP is having to perform what's called interpolation on the image. And interpolation is just the moving or removing or adding of pixels to your original image or layer. So basically every time you scale an image down, you are shrinking the image, which means GIMP has to remove pixels from the image to accommodate that. If you scale up, GIMP is having to add new pixels to the image, so it's having to invent new pixels. And then rotating and doing other things like perspective or flipping is causing GIMP to have to rearrange the pixels, so basically moving the pixels to new locations. Every time it does this, it is losing quality on the image. So basically what you have to do is you have to cut down on the number of transformations you apply to your image in any one given session. Also, there's a setting you can set the interpolation to to improve the quality, so I'll cover both of these solutions. So first off, let's grab a tool that's going to allow us to perform multiple transformations before applying the transformations. So I can hit Shift T on the keyboard, which grabs my unified transform tool. So you can see it's here inside of the transformations tool group. Shift T is that shortcut key we just used. And I do have a full lecture covering this tool on my Git Masterclass as well as on DMD Premium. So before I do anything with this tool, I can come over here to the tool options and change the interpolation. Linear is basically one of the lower quality interpolation settings. However, it is faster. So if you have a slower computer, this allows for better performance but I recommend no halo or low halo. Let's just go with no halo here to keep things simple. That's going to create a higher quality image by the time the transformations are complete. So that's one solution. And the next solution is we can perform all of our transformations here with this tool for the most part. So let's start with the scale tool. I will click and drag on this handle to use the scale tool. If I hold the shift key, it'll maintain the original aspect ratio of the image. So now I can release my mouse and let's use the move tool to move this over. The move tool doesn't affect the quality of the image, by the way. But now let's say that we want to change the perspective of this. We can do that. And then we can also hover our mouse over this little handle here and you'll see that allows us to apply a shear to this. And if I hover my mouse around the outside of the image, I can rotate it. And then let's say after we do all that, we decide we want to scale this again. So if I hover my mouse over the larger square here on the outside and I hold shift and I drag it, we can scale it. So we've performed all these transformations, but we haven't applied the transformation. So once you are finally ready to apply the transformation, come over here and click transform. And that's just gonna transform that once and you'll see the quality is gonna look better. It's still going to lose quality because again, anytime you perform transformations on an image, 
and you apply that interpolation, quality will be lost. But in this case, there is significantly less quality loss. So let's move on now to the fourth item on our list that annoys beginners, and that's going to be that the handles of the path tool operate independently by default in GIMP. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's come over here to another image I have opened up, and the shortcut key for the path tool is the B key. That stands for Bezier curves, and you can also grab it over here in the toolbox. So let's say I wanted to outline the model here to get rid of the background. I'll hold control and zoom in. And so what I would do is just click and drag to create nodes. So every time you drag, you get these handles and that allows you to adjust the curves in real time. So let's just go up to here. So let's say you wanted to go back and edit the nodes here and edit the curves between the nodes. So what you would do is come over here and click on a node and that's gonna give you these handles but in GIMP by default, when you click and drag the handle, it's only adjusting the one side here. So a lot of people coming from other programs like Photoshop are used to these handles adjusting together. So the quick fix to this is you just hold the shift key. And once you do that, it will drag both of these handles, edit both of these handles simultaneously. So that may be the behavior you're used to there. And obviously the handles are going to mimic each other, except in the opposite direction. So once you're ready, you can release your mouse and release the shift key. So let's come back up here to this node. You can of course continue on like so. And then just one more example, click on here. If I don't hold shift, I can edit the handle separately. If I hold shift, I can edit them together. The fifth thing that annoys beginners in GIMP is that you can't select multiple layers simultaneously. So let's navigate back to the original composition. It does have lots of layers. So let's say I wanted to move all of these line layers simultaneously. I can't just simply click on a layer and then shift click to select multiple layers. And actually shift clicking adds a layer mask using the last layer mask settings. So that's probably not what you guys are wanting to happen. So let's hit control Z to back up. So actually in GIMP 3.0, which will hopefully come out sometime this century, you will be able to shift click to select multiple layers, but in GIMP 2.10 versions, you cannot do it. The workaround is going to be that you can use what's called the transform lock feature. So you'll see that when you hover your mouse over this left portion of the layer, you get this little box outline. When you click on that, it's going to give you what's called the transform lock feature. So that is now enabled for this layer, which happens to be this line here. If I now click the transform lock feature on all the layers that I want to move together or transform together, so let's skip past this layer group here, and I can now click on all these. These will all now move together or transform together as if I had selected multiple layers. So let's hit the M key on the keyboard, and now when I click and drag, you'll see that all of those layers will drag together and I'll hit Control Z. The same applies for transformations. So if I hit Shift S on the keyboard and I scale this down and I hit Scale, all of those other layers will scale together. So that is one workaround there. And you can always Shift click on the Transform Lock icon. That will transform lock all of the layers in the composition. Shift click again. That'll get rid of all of those except for the one you clicked on, and then you can just single click on that to get rid of it. So that's a little shortcut. Maybe you shift click, and then you just click the ones that you don't want to transform. It's just a quicker way to select all of those. So let me shift click again, get rid of that. So something else you can do is if you have layers inside a layer group, you can move all of those layers together, or you can transform all of them together. So for transformations, simply click on the layer group, so I have a layer group right here. It contains all of the letters. So now if I were to click on the layer group with the scale tool, I can now click and drag and you'll see it'll scale all of them together. And I'll hit Control Z to back up and I'll come over here and just exit out of the scale tool. If I hit the M key on the keyboard to grab the move tool, you'll see when I click and drag, it's actually going to still uh, drag individual layers inside the layer group. You'll see that it opened up the layer group there and it highlighted the G layer. So let me hit Control Z to back up. With the Move tool, what you have to do is hold the Shift key while you're clicked on the layer group and that will then drag all the layers inside the layer group. 
So that's another way to move or transform multiple layers as if you had selected multiple layers simultaneously. So I'll hit Control Z to back up. Number six on this list of things that annoy beginners in GIMP is that there's no hand tool. So when you first open up GIMP and you come over here to the move tool, you expect to find some kind of hand tool in here, or maybe you think this is the hand tool, but it's actually the smudge tool. So, you know, you expect a hand tool in the toolbox and it's just not there. Well, there actually is a hand tool in GIMP. It's just not listed as a tool. So what you can do to use this tool is simply use the middle mouse button there, the middle click on your mouse. So when I click and hold that button, you're going to see this little icon with the four arrows. That is GIMP's hand tool. You can also use the space bar. So that allows you to move around on the image. Or you can use what's called the little bird's eye feature down here in the bottom right. So when I click and hold on that, I can then drag my mouse around and that also acts as a hand tool. Item number seven, lucky number seven. The eraser tool does not erase to transparency in GIMP. So let's come back to one of our images here. Hold control, zoom out. Again, control shift J is going to center us up nicely. Let's come over here to the toolbox, grab the eraser tool. You want to erase the transparency with this, so you start erasing. But lo and behold, it erases to your background color. So the reason for that is that images in GIMP do not automatically have an alpha channel applied to them. So you have to manually apply the alpha channel. Sometimes an alpha channel will be applied at some point while you're working in a composition, but not always. So let's hit Control Z to back up. To add an alpha channel, come over here, right click, and come down here to add alpha channel. You'll see that the text on your layer name will no longer be bold. That's how you know you have an alpha channel. So now with the eraser tool, when I erase, it erases to transparency. And actually there is a hidden feature with this tool called the unerase feature. So when I hold the alt key, we get the minus sign there. And now I can paint back those original pixels. So the eighth item on this list that frustrates beginners when they're getting started in GIMP is that they can't move objects that they've added to their image or their composition. So let's come over here and grab a selection tool. And let's say we click and drag and we create a little text box or something here on the image. And so let's drag the color white inside of this selection area to create a box. And I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. So now if I hit the M key and I decide at some point that I want to move this object and I click and drag, you'll see it's actually going to drag the entire layer. So the reason that's happening, I'll hit Control Z to back up, is that when I painted this object, I actually painted it directly on my image layer. So they're combined onto the same layer, they are not separate layers, and therefore all the pixels have been merged together. So that's obviously a no-no in GIMP. Anytime you add an object, you want to add it to its own layer so that this doesn't happen. So the easiest way to fix this, obviously, is to hit Control Z and back up. So we have our selection area here still. I'll come over here. If I click the Create a New Layer icon, I'll name this layer Square. Fill it with Transparency and click OK. So now we have a new transparent layer. You can now click and drag the color into the selection area. Control Shift A is the shortcut key to select none. And now with my move tool, I can move the object separately and it's not going to move my image. One issue with this is that the layer size is the size of the entire composition. You can fix that by going to Layer, Crop to Content, and that's going to crop the size of the layer down to the size of your object. Item number nine that annoys beginners when they're starting off in GIMP is that their dialogues are missing or out of place. So the dialogues being these items here that we've been working with, you'll see there are several dialogues that show here by default. You've got your paths tab over here. You've got your tool options. So for some of you, you may not see some of these dialogues on here. GIMP is constantly changing the layout. So it's always looking different depending on which version of GIMP you're using. Plus, it depends on your personal settings, your personal preferences. But regardless, these dialogues can be moved around, they can be closed, they can be reopened. So for example, if I click and drag the Layers panel and I release, it's going to have this floating out here. And then let's say maybe I close this out by accident. Now it's gone. And then these dialogues here can be rearranged. So if I click and drag and release my mouse right here, 
you'll see it'll change the order. Or I can come over here, click and drag this and move it down here and release. Or I can click and drag and you'll see this little highlight will highlight in blue. And when I release, you'll see that this undo history dialog is now off to the left and it's spanning the entire length here. So basically your dialogues might become a complete mess at some point and drive you crazy. But there are a few things you can do to sort of fix this issue. And the first thing is you can reset everything back to the defaults. So you can do that by going to Edit, Preferences. And if I come over here under Interface, you can expand this if it's collapsed. Come over to Window Management. And now you can come over here to Reset Saved Window Positions to Default Values. And this is saying that the next time you open up GIMP, everything will be returned to the default. So I'll click OK and click OK again. So now let's come over here and exit out of GIMP. We're just going to discard all the changes there for those compositions. And now we're going to reopen GIMP. So now you'll see that all of the dialogues have returned to the default position. This is how the dialogues are set up when you first download GIMP. So this looks a little bit different compared to the setup I was using before. You'll see there are a lot more dialogues opened over here. And our layers panel is now down here, whereas before it was over here. So that's just one way to fix that issue. Another way is you can use this little menu here, this triangle menu on the right. So right now we're on our layers panel. Let's say we wanted to lock this so that we don't accidentally delete it at any point or move it around. So on this layers panel, come over here to the little triangle menu and you can come over here and click lock tab to dock. And so now if I try to move this, you're going to see that it won't let you move it. So it's locked it in place. So something else you can do, we can come up top here. So this is going to be our paintbrushes. I can come over here, use that triangle menu and go to close tab. So if we don't want that open by default, we can close it out. Let's do that as well for the patterns here. And if you wanted to bring any of those back at any point, you can use this same triangle menu and go over to add tab. And for example, I can come down here to brushes, which is one of the ones we just closed out. And it's going to open up the brushes dialog here inside of this area. So if I wanted to add a tab in this area, so let's say we wanted to add our patterns tab, click on this menu, go to add tab. And now let's come over here to patterns. So that opens up the Patterns tab in this area right here. So we've kind of customized the Dialogues area now. Let's say we wanted to save these positions so that the next time we open up GIMP, we don't have to go through this process again. What you can do is go to Edit, Preferences, and once again, we're going to go over here to Window Management. And you'll see there's a button here that says Save Window Positions Now. You can click that button. And you also have a checkbox here that says save window positions on exit. That way, every time you close down GIMP, it's going to save whatever your last window positions were and you don't have to rearrange them every time. So I'll come over here, click OK. And one last thing I want to point out is that sometimes all of the dialogues disappear. And that happens when you hit the tab key on your keyboard sometimes. It's not doing it right now, but if I go to Windows, Hide Docs, you'll see it has a shortcut key of tab. So if I click that option, they all disappear. I can just go to Windows, Hide Docs, and that will bring those back. So the tenth and final item on this list that annoys beginners when they're first starting out in GIMP is that nothing happens when they're trying to paint on a layer mask. So I've reopened up two images here into GIMP, and I'm going to once again click and drag this image onto here and release. And I'll hit Shift S on the keyboard to bring up the Scale tool, and I'm just going to click and drag this inwards to scale it down. And maybe let's go with this size right here. Come over here and hit scale. So let's say I wanted to add a layer mask to get rid of this background. So let's come over here to the layers panel. So I'm on the dropped buffer layer here. So to add a layer mask, I come over here and you'll see a little icon here. Let's actually extend this out a bit. So you'll see a layer mask icon here in the layers panel. I'll click to add that. And so you're going to have some options here by default. You have white full opacity, black full transparency, and then some other options. So white is usually the one that I start off with. Anytime your layer mask is pure white, it's basically not going to do anything yet. 
as you add black to the layer mask, it's going to hide the items where you paint black. So let's start with white full opacity. I'm gonna make sure invert mask is unchecked. That basically just inverts the colors. So white full opacity, click add. So now we have a white layer mask here. So that's why nothing has happened on here yet. It's still just a white layer mask. It's like a blank layer mask. So now if I come over here and grab the paintbrush tool, if I were to sit here and try to paint on this right now, nothing is gonna happen because my color is set to white. Anytime you paint white on a white layer mask, you're not doing anything. What you have to do is, let's come over here, there's a little icon here. I'll click that little icon. That will set black as my foreground color and then white will now be my background color. And anytime you paint black on a layer mask, it's now going to totally hide those layers that you're painting on. So that's probably what you guys are trying to do. And if you were to paint middle gray on a layer mask, so let's change this color to middle gray, that creates partial transparency. So you'll see it's going to bring these pixels back in, but it's going to do so so that they are still partially transparent. If I were to switch now to white, and paint on the layer mask, you'll see that that's going to bring those pixels back entirely. So let's come over here, switch back to black. I also wanna point out any of the areas you paint black on here are going to show up in the little thumbnail for the layer mask. So that's kinda of how you know where you have painted here on the layer mask. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.